Welcome y'all to Whiplash TV and thanks for coming back to check out another video here on the channel. Today we're going to work some more on this Tahoe and we're going to black out the rear bumper. This rear bumper is chrome and as you well know if you've seen the rest of the videos that have been uploaded so far on this build, we're looking to black things out. So we are going to black out this rear bumper with Hyperdip. So for those who don't know, Hyperdip is kind of a rubbery like substance and it sprays on like paint but it is also a peelable coating so if you ever want to take it off and reveal the chrome all you got to do is peel it off but when it's applied correctly it will stay on and for a long time and will look good some of y'all have seen me use hyperdip before on the duramax where i used it on the moldings on the side of the doors of that truck but there's still a lot out there that don't know about hyperdip or how to use it and are interested as well in the outcome of how good it'll look. On the Duramax, I used a satin black. Today on the Tahoe, I'm gonna go ahead and use this gloss black. So it'll be my first time using the gloss black. I'm interested to see, as I'm sure you are, how well this gloss black is gonna turn out. So to get started, the first thing that we have to do is use the Hyper Dip Prep Spray. This prep spray foams onto the surface and then you have to wipe it with a lint-free rag and you have to clean the surface so that way the hyper dip will adhere to and stick to the surface. It is important to do a really good job prepping the surface and to get all the little nooks and crannies. I already removed this black plastic piece from off of the bumper. It simply clips on with those two front clips and then the two center clips there go into the two outer holes. And it just lips down and over the bumper. So that is easy to remove and I highly suggest removing it. After the dip is complete, I'll put that back on. This side of the bumper is really clean and shiny. You can tell I've already used the pre-dip spray on this side and been wiping it down, getting all the dirt and debris off of it. And this side over here still has some dirt on it and some dirt up underneath the molding. So I've got to finish wiping it down. <laughs> so just wipe it down real good, get all that junk off. After you get done wiping it with the prep spray, the next thing we're gonna do is mask off around where we're gonna spray the hyper dip. After you get done wiping down the bumper with the prep spray, I recommend taking some compressed air and blowing around the molding and the license plate lights. Doing this will ensure that you don't have any pre-dip spray still sitting behind those things. If you had any liquid hiding behind there, then that would keep the hyper dip from sticking. Everything looks real good now, so we're going to start masking off these moldings. With Hyperdip, you want to leave a little bit of the molding showing. That way you can grab the edge of it and it's going to peel right off of the molding. But the Hyperdip on the bumper is not going to peel off. It will stay, so it will break a clean line. If any of the hyperdip gets onto your paint, 
or other parts of your molding by accident, you don't need to worry because it rubs off of that really easy. All right, I've got all the masking done on the bumper. Everything's masked off, ready to start laying down some hyper dip. So the first thing we want to do now is we want to start putting on a dust coat. So we'll do about two to three of those and then we'll start laying it on heavier. Don't forget to let it fully dry in between coats. All right, this will be our second dust coat. All right, time for coat number three, which is still gonna be a lighter coat. One other thing that I will mention, when you're spraying your hyper dip in places like this, try to get around different areas of things like these lights and the molding and up underneath here. But when you do it, don't concentrate on one spot for too long. Otherwise, it'll create a run. Now you're gonna put a lot of coats of this on so you can hide runs if they start early. If you have a run later on, it's a bit harder to conceal it, but it does not run as easy as paint. That's it for coat number three. In certain places, it is starting to get kind of shiny, but across the entire bumper, not really. That lets you know that you're keeping it a dust coat and are not going really heavy. We'll start to see the glossiness and the sheen come out in coat number four. You can already see though that most of the chrome is already covered up by the black hyper dip. It's gonna look so good once it's all done. One other thing I wanted to show y'all was this gas tank. I already cleaned it up and used some satin black paint on it. I did that just to clean it up, help black it out. Before it was kind of dirty and dingy looking, but hitting it with some satin black paint really helped to clean it up. Now it doesn't make it as noticeable. It's time for coat number four. After this fourth coat, you should not see any chrome anywhere left on the bumper and you should start to see some sheen and some gloss on this fourth coat.
So now that the fourth coat has dried, I'm gonna go ahead and lay down a fifth coat. You already got the idea from the first four coats of how I'm putting it on and laying it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these other coats knocked out and then I'll catch back up with you. I've got six coats of Hyper Dip on it. So now it's time to start peeling this tape off. I'm really impressed with how glossy that gloss black hyper dip really is. Did a great job. Thank y'all so much for watching the video. Please hit that subscribe button. Also ring that notifications bell and don't forget to like the video before you get on out of here. Drop me a comment down below of how you think it turned out. I'll see y'all in the next video.